going to go to the fifth verse of Romans chapter 1. Here we're still continuing to talk about Jesus. And we talk about who he was, both in the flesh and his divine nature. Now Paul changes direction a little bit and tells us about what he had received through Christ. Really, if only through Christ that we receive any spiritual blessings. Amen. Verse 5, he writes, By whom, speaking of Christ, we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name. So there's multitudes of spiritual blessings which we receive in and through Christ. We can Amen. probably spend a whole lesson or a whole day even on those, but he particularly mentions here his grace and apostleship. I think we all know grace is unmerited favor. We receive it really all throughout our lives, but especially at our salvation. If you can't see grace in your life, even now, then you must not be looking very hard. Right. Amen. The fact that we would receive any good from his hand is a display of his grace. You're right. We see that grace comes through Christ and Christ alone. John 1 17 says that while law was given by Moses, but grace and truth comes through Jesus Christ. That yes, the law was God's instrument in the Old Testament, if you will, but we see grace and truth coming through the person of the Lord Jesus Christ when he comes to this world in the flesh. Right. We see grace used 121 different times in the New Testament and the same word translated favor five other times. Grace truly is the favor of God. Amen. Upon whom he will. But grace is not just a New Testament teaching. It's certainly more predominant in the New Testament than the Old, but we know, I think Brother Larry preached last Sunday, that even Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Amen. Exactly. Really, Adam and Eve were partakers of his grace. They, he could have struck them down dead as soon as they sinned, but he displayed mercy. Amen. Then he went further and graciously made a sacrifice for their sins. And God is... <clears throat> much more gracious to us than I think sometimes we think about. Well, here Paul says that grace, he received grace and apostleship. Oh, well, we know, as we saw back in verse 1, Paul was specifically given to be an apostle to the Gentiles. Yet, in a more generic sense, the apostleship means the commissioner sending away. Amen. You know, we all have a commission as the Lord's church. Mark 16, 15, go ye in all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. As Paul is given a specific ministry to teach and preach to the Gentiles. But we as his church are given the ministry of preaching the gospel of the whole world. Amen. We notice here also that Paul says we have received these things. He doesn't He's not boastful about it and says that I have received these things. Or, but really, we are all partakers of the goodness of God. So he, I know Paul seemed to have struggled with pride throughout his life, but here he seems to try to not magnify himself and include himself among the other apostles and among all of the saints. And he says, mm -hmm. We have received grace and apostleship. So Paul often saw him, oftentimes saw himself as the least of the apostles because of his life before the Lord saved him. Right. It, it really doesn't matter how sinful we are, God can still use us in a mighty way as he did with the Apostle Paul. But he said we have received grace and apostleship, and we each have our own 
ministry, if you will, that we are to fulfill. Whatever God has given to us, it's you can be sure it's of Him. Whether right. it's to be a teacher, a preacher, whether it's to just be a witness for Him out in the world. We all have some sort of mission field, I guess you could say. Amen. We all have some ministry that we can fulfill. And we ought to seek to bring glory to God by it. Amen. We can be sure whatever God, whatever ministry we have, it was given to us by God, not by we ourselves. If we are doing it in our own power, our own desires, and we are not doing it according to God's will. That's right. Well, I, I've noticed among uh, the more, quote, reformed crowd, they seem to be very <coughs> arrogant about their... You're right. They have the, the truth that they think, or they have some of the truth at least. Mm -hmm. Among our type of Baptists, sometimes we can be very proud. Yep. But a true understanding of grace will lead us neither to arrogance or pride. You're right. But going on here, Paul says, He received grace and apostleship, and he says, for obedience to the faith among all nations. And so obedience to the faith is not works for salvation. That's not what he's speaking of here. But really, we were given grace that we might obey what he calls the faith. Mm -hmm. The faith is really the whole of Christian doctrine and teaching. We see this in Jude verse 3 when he says that we should earnestly contend for the faith once delivered into the saints. But the faith is different than our saving faith. So the faith is, you might say, embodies the whole of Christianity. I mean, that is in true Christianity, not what the world calls it. But that is the faith and that is what we are be obedient to. We the whole of the scriptures, the whole of the teachings of the Word of God. We turn over Titus for just a moment. Titus chapter 2. Beginning verse 11 through 14 here. He says, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us to deny ungodliness and worldly lust, we shall live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Amen. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that we might redeem him, or that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify himself of peculiar people zealous of good works. Here we see the same grace again mentioned in how it teaches us these things. It teaches us to live godly. It teaches us to look for the appearing of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It teaches us that he gave himself for us, that we might be a peculiar people. Which really ought to be our desire to live godly and look for the return of Christ. Amen. But it's really only by grace that we can do these things. The more I study, the more I, I guess the longer I try to serve him, the more I realize it's all of grace. Mm -hmm. And we can't do it in our own powers. If we try to, we'll fail. But that even the most faithful of men, it's only of grace. And really, <clears throat> as I think I've said before, the only thing that separates, quote, the best of saints from the worst of men is the grace of God. Amen. But I do have a real question or concern about those who profess to be saved and yet never desire to serve God. That's it. It's that grace that saves you. It's the same grace that will teach you to live godly, to live sober, to live righteously, to look for His appearing. So by and large, godly living has been thrown out the door by those who call themselves Christians. You're right. Now we... We all say we look for the return of Christ, but in practice we don't live that way. Mm -hmm. And then that Christ died for our sins is often minimized 
even among Christians today as well. So the right understanding of grace will cause us to really drive us to serve him. A right understanding of how good he is towards us will give us that desire to live according to his word. To Amen. Be obedient to the faith. But oftentimes we are too concerned about this world. Mm -hmm. well, going back to our, our text here in Romans 1, he says, For obedience to the faith among all nations. And we know Paul was given the ministry to the Gentiles, which extended really to the whole world, to all nations. Well, he in his lifetime he's traveled to many different places and right. You know, even today his ministry is impacting all nations. Mm -hmm. Amen. Between his missionary travels and how the Lord used him in that and his letters we have in the New Testament. The Lord is still using the ministry of the Apostle Paul to reach all the nations of this world. Mm -hmm. We as a church have the same mission, if you will, to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Or we can turn over to Matthew 28 and read the Great Commission there. I can't quite quote all of that. The more expanded version, I guess you could say, of the Great Commission, Matthew 28. Verses 18 through 20, it says, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore teach all nations. He said he didn't say some nations or just America. Right. But all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things <laughs> whatsoever I command you. And lo, I am with you always, even into the end of the world. Amen. Amen. Those verse 20 specifically tells us to teach all nations to, to observe all things whatsoever I commanded you. And that's the obedience to the faith that Paul speaks about us. Mm -hmm. To observe all things that God has commanded us. And it's really our duty as a church now only to preach the gospel but then to the quote disciple new believers. To mm -hmm. teach them. To train them up in the with the Word of God, well, certainly they can learn by the Holy Spirit. He is the ultimate guide in all truth. Amen. But it's our job as God's people to teach the truth of the Word of God. <laughs> we ought to preach the gospel to the world, but we need to teach the truth of the Word of God to the believers. Amen. Well, he says that we are Going on from that, he concludes verse 5 with for his name. Mm -hmm. It's for the Christ name, the name of Christ, we might say. And only this is the key, that we are to do all things for Christ. That we are not to do it for our own glory, our own praise. But if we're not doing it for Christ and the glory of God, then we're pretty much wasting our time. Right. Are we motivated by the, the praise and adoration of men, or are we motivated by a love for Christ? Right. That's one of the primary differences between truly serving God and becoming Pharisaical. Mm -hmm. The Pharisees, they knew the law, they understood the law, they kept the law, really. Paul, speaking of himself, as touching the righteous, which is in the law, blameless. Mm -hmm. He was... In the eyes of man, a good person, quote unquote, but yet he wasn't motivated by love for Christ, was he? So many, many today, they desire the praise of men, don't they? they desire to be seen of men and get accolades from fellow men, whether it be the world, or whether it be fellow Christians, but whatever we do, it ought to be really to bring glory and honor to Christ and to God. Amen. 
2 Corinthians 5, 20 tells us we are his ambassadors in this world. So whatever we do ought to be a reflection of Christ, just as our governmental ambassadors are a reflection upon us in other countries, our representatives for us in other countries, we are to be representatives for Christ in this world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, we ought to seek to bring him to glory and honor, not we ourselves. Not if we are desiring the praise and we are not bringing glory to God. No, First Corinthians ten thirty one tells us, "Do all for the glory of God." But if we're not doing it for the glory of God, we should we really be doing it at all? Right. Amen. Whether it's preaching, teaching, passing out tracts, doing charitable deeds, we ought to be seeking the glory of God, not the glory of ourselves. Amen. That's why Christ condemns the, the Pharisees and the hypocrites in, in his ministry. I think it's over in chapter 6 of Matthew, particularly, he mentions those that would pray on the streets so they may be seen of men. Mm -hmm. Those that would do their own before men, they may be seen of men. Well, sometimes we have to do things publicly, but we ought not to desire the praise of men. We ought not to be doing it to be seen. Right. Mm -hmm. Politicians are good at that, but we as children of God, we ought to be desiring that our light would so shine that they might see our good works and glorify our Father, which is in heaven. Mm -hmm. Not that they would glorify us. And we shouldn't be so secretive that they don't even know that we're Christians at all. Right. That's not what Paul means here. That's not what Christ meant in his teachings. No matter what it is, whether it's the internet ministry or teaching Sunday school or preaching or just witnessing out on the streets. Right. You need to do it for the primarily that Christ might be exalted and God might be glorified. Mm -hmm. If we're doing it for any other reason, we have the wrong motivation. We'll go ahead and close with that. We'll, we'll next week we'll hopefully finish up the, the first sentence of the book of Romans. Yeah. <laughs>